day the world is becoming darker and darker. Soon the Son of Man shall appear in glory and power, and the nation shall mourn with the sight of his coming. Are you ready for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As the armies of darkness march towards global domination, many slumber as we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us awake and announce his kingdom. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. You are listening to Radio Redemption. And power! And power! Power! For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory be to his name, glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're listening to Radio Redemption and Power, we are a SAR Florida radio program that preaches the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the topic of tonight's program is wars and rumors of wars. We're going to be seeing, uh, speaking about what the Bible speaks about, uh, how much chaos there's going to be in the last days, but how we as Christians to be at peace, waiting upon the Lord. Remember, you can reach us on our webpage, redemptionandpower.com, where you can listen to our live feed directly from the page. You can also hear all of our podcasts, either from the podcast page on there, or you can find us on iTunes as well. You can write to us at redemptionandpower at gmail.com. You can also contact us via our Facebook page. Or at our phone number, 305-320-7727. That's 305-320-7727. Brother Lewis, would you kindly lead us in prayer tonight? Amen. Father God, we want to thank you today for everything that you have done in our lives and through our lives, Lord. And today, Father, we want to pray, Father, that you may be able to use us, Father, Father, in these last days when things are coming apart and we see the world, Father, going deeper and deeper into danger, Lord, show us, Father, what we are to expect, Lord. And more over, Father, show us how we are to stand as Christians. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, you're listening to Radio Redemption and Power.
I don't know about you, but it seems like everywhere you turn, someone is talking about a war coming to our land. The other day, I turned on the TV and a lady judge was telling the people to buy guns and get ready to use them because ISIS is coming to kill us. We hear of wars breaking out in other countries and rumors of them getting closer to our own nation. It seems to me that we are living in constant fear of something happening to us and to our families. There are even some Christian ministries selling dry food to store away, and many people are buying bunkers to hide from the coming dangers. People are on the run, and that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be. Jesus said that in the last days we will hear about these dangers, but he instructs us not to be alarmed. Mark 13, 7. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. The fact that things in the world are getting worse should not surprise you. If you read your Bible, you would know that. However, what we should be concerned about is our relationship with Christ. In other words, are you saved? I am not talking about repeating a couple of words on the altar of a church. What I mean is, have you truly dedicated your life to Him? Then, and only then, can we truly deal with the spirit of fear. This reminds me when I was going to elementary school. There was a rumor in the school that a boogeyman, as they called him, was in one of the bathrooms, and he was apprehending the kids. This created such a fear in us that all the kids avoided even passing by that bathroom. This is the same tactics the enemy is using today. The devil is defeated, yet he makes people believe that he is still strong. ISIS, for example, is nothing, and all they can do is cause fear. We must understand that we are children of a great God, and his weapons are greater than anything that Isis or anyone else can muster. Isaiah fifty four seventeen. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Another kind of fear is the fear of dying. One thing we must understand is that the gospel is a cause. What I mean by this is that it might require you to lay down your life for it. For example, some of us have sons and daughters that risk their lives to protect us every day, such as police officers, military people, and firemen. This is their cause. The cause of a Christian is much greater than that. It is saving the world from eternal destruction. And yes, some will fall, but they will rise again in Christ. Mark 
13, 9. When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local consuls and be beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my follower. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. Friends, being a Christian is not easy, but it is well worth it. It is a privilege to be able to serve God and complete his mission here on earth. We can't change the future. The length of time we live is not certain. The end is coming near. And things are getting worse in this world. But instead of living in fear, let us take heed to the warnings in the scriptures and be ready for his second coming. Amen. Amen. No doubt that in these last days, We've been seeing many men that have risen to capitalize off of Christians and off of people's fear. And though there have been many recent failed predictions regarding the return of Christ and the end times, as Christians we should not allow these failed predictions to shake us from the confidence we have in the living word of God. Unfortunately, this is what happens when false prophets rise and prophesy false predictions. Not only does it become a stumbling block for immature Christians, but it also causes the world to mock God's people. See, as Christians, we make a grievous mistake when we minimize how sinful it is to misrepresent God, when we cause the world to blaspheme His name. And just to show you how serious of a sin it is to misrepresent God, we look at the life of David. And the prophet Nathan confronts King David, which at this point he had not only lusted over another man's wife, but he had gone so far as to murder the woman's husband to hide the fact that he had slept and impregnated her. And not only did he commit adultery, but what makes matters worse is that he murdered a man. And after he is rebuked by the prophet, after God pronounces the judgment that is to come upon him because of his sin, that, that he would be publicly shamed, that the sword would not depart from his house, the prophet mentions, 